Welcome back, everyone. This is Bill Bunce from Automation Anywhere. I'm the Director of Public Sector. Um, on Automation Presents, we put a spotlight on use cases of robotic process automation across public sector that uh, are being tested or are in use today. Uh, this week, I have with me Derek Tetlow from Agile Defense. They've built a bot around STIG automation. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Derek. Welcome. Thanks, Bill. Happy to be here. Uh, with me, I also have Anthony Farina and Daniel Leon, uh, two of my team members on the RPA team here at Agile Defense. Uh, for Agile Defense, um, just a little bit, little bit of a background on who we are. Um, we are a Department of Defense and public sector uh, contracting firm. We do a lot of IT work for the DOD. <clears throat> we focus mainly on uh, service desk, uh, cybersecurity work, uh, network administration, and then we do have a presence in RPA. Uh, we also do artificial intelligence and machine learning and software development. So kind of on the intersection of all of those things, uh, we took a look at one of the things that we do quite often uh, for RPA use cases, uh, STIG automation. So in a lot of work that we do, uh, STIGs are a heavy lift uh, for our people that are boots on the ground. So we thought, well, why not leverage RPA to see what we could do to assist with that? <clears throat> so we've been in this process for uh, a little bit now, building out uh, various automations as it relates to uh, STIGs for various categories. So for those who are not familiar, uh, STIG stands for Security Technical Implementation Guide, and these are released by DISA, uh, federal agency that kind of oversees uh, cybersecurity and configuration baselines for all DOD assets. So <clears throat> this release, releases these configuration settings and then it is up to various agencies to configure their infrastructure, their assets uh, accordingly. But as you can assume, if you have a very large organization with a vast array of, of servers and switches and routers and so on and so forth, it can be a rather cumbersome effort to make sure that all the configurations are set um, and that when you uh, do those checks that you have to go through and do uh, hundreds and hundreds of checks against all your, your assets. Um, and then make sure that those are up to date because those, those uh, stick category uh, guidelines do change. Um, it, it just ends up being uh, somewhat of a, a maintenance nightmare, especially if you're doing things manually. So again, we said, well, how can we assist with that? How can we help that? And we uh, went through and built out uh, a whole range of automations and we're gonna focus on a very small subset of those just to prove out the, the use case, give you a, an understanding and a look and feel for, for how that goes. Um, <clears throat> but again, we, we've built this out for uh, a whole range of categories uh, as it relates to uh, the different STIGs that this uh, has released. So Daniel Leon is gonna share his screen here in a second and we're gonna bring up Automation Anywhere. Uh, based on the DOD ATOs at the time being, uh, this is being run on uh, Automation Anywhere 1135. Uh, so the commands are all built out in 1135. And you'll see <clears throat> once, the, uh, once it gets spun up, um, it connects through PowerShell. It's uh, running the PowerShell commands. It has an Excel playbook that it's using to grab those commands and then it's executing those against uh, remote servers, bringing back those settings and then rendering a CKL file, which is the uh, standard file for this uh, STIG viewer uh, to view those settings uh, for that particular um, server or switch or router or whatever it is that, that you went out and checked. <clears throat> the nice thing is that once you have that, uh, in STIG Viewer, you can go through and look and see all of what the, uh, the findings were uh, returned and then go in and kind of dial in and, uh, and address those um, areas of concern if you need to. But this gives you a quick way to run through a whole bunch of checks uh, in an automated fashion, allowing users to spend their time doing things that are really much higher value 
uh, and things that bots can do, making those decisions and those higher cognitive functions uh, that really humans are, are much, much better at and, and the bots aren't designed to do. So with that, I'm going to ask Daniel to share his screen. Uh, Bill, are you able to stop so I can... Uh... There we go. Excellent. So as you can see, this is uh, right now we're sticking a 2008 member server. We have IE 11 in here. We have rail seven and this is just going to run through and we've set this up in our lab environment and <clears throat> you'll notice that uh, some of the stuff that we've uh, we've set up, it isn't stigged to uh, stig standard settings. Some of it is, some of it isn't. Um, but that's exactly what's going to happen is you're going to see, uh, you know, it goes out, it finds stuff, and then it reports it back in the Excel file and then the CKL file. Um, and, and it's doing exactly what it should do. Uh, so again, we've set these up in our lab. We're running against stuff that's in our lab, but this is mirrored to what you would see in a DOD environment. So go ahead, Daniel. So you see it's brought up PowerShell, it's logging in to the remote machine, and now it's gonna start looping through the Excel files. <clears throat> and the Excel files are our playbook, right? These are where we have all the list of, of settings and configurations that are expected from the, the DISA um, configuration files. And those files that DISA provides are XML files, and the nice thing is we also have a bot <clears throat> that parses those files out and helps you build out those Excel files uh, automatically. So when this goes and they release a 2016 server uh, checklist to say, hey, here's what the configuration should be for 2016. <clears throat> Instead of having to build all that in the Excel file yourself manually, we have a bot that says, okay, this is an expected format. We understand what this format is we're gonna go ahead and parse out that Excel or that XML file for you and pre-populate and build that 2016 Excel runbook for you. And it has it all predefined and preset. So you're basically way ahead of the game than where you would be if you just downloaded that file and had to, to parse out the XML yourself. <clears throat> and so you can see here, for, um, and I don't, is this one, is this 2008, Daniel? We're on the 2008 machine. It's, uh, it's doing uh, the Microsoft uh, Internet Explorer 11 uh, stick checks right now. Gotcha. So you can see just based on Agile Defense, there are certain settings that we have that don't necessarily meet this standards for IE 11. So you're seeing, um, you know, you're seeing various uh, findings in that file. <clears throat> which is not necessarily uncommon either. You may have uh, servers that are, you know, have a finding and are uh, okay. You know, either a, a poem or a risk ass assessment has been written that says, yes, we understand that this does not comply and it is a cat one or cat two or cat three. <clears throat> and there's a certain level of, of assumed risk um, but we need this setting to be whatever it is, and so we're going to allow it. Um, with that, the nice thing with the playbook files is that if you run your Stigbot against a 2016 server and on vulnerability one, two, three, four, five, you know it's going to be a finding. You can actually go into the Excel uh, runbook file and say, all right, well, um, I want my value to be a one as opposed to a negative one or, you know, whatever it may be so that it doesn't report a finding because you know that that's going to be a, a false positive for a failure when in fact you're already aware of that and you know that that's the case and you don't need to be bothered with that finding. <clears throat> so you can see here now uh, the Excel runbooks have been updated. And then the XML files or the, the CKL files, which are the output for STIG viewer um, to render have been created. And those are available in STIG viewer and they're based off of the, um, the Excel file. 
the Excel playbook file there. And so you can see the extension type there is a CKL file. So rail seven updated, IE 11 updated, uh, 2008 R2, so on and so forth. <laughs> so we feel that this is a very good solution. Um, you know, there are uh, several tools out there that do STIG automation to an extent, but where we feel that our STIGBot excels is the number of different appliances, uh, OSs, and uh, uses that we can attack with the bot as opposed to other products which may be focused on just windows or you know they can't get switches and routers or they can't dive into uh, software like uh, you know a, a, um, SQL Server 2012 or 2016 or something like that. So we think we feel our use case diversification is really the strong suit uh, with our STIG bot and then you just have the ancillary benefit of well I have an automation anywhere bot and if I have bandwidth available to that, that digital worker and that digital worker isn't sitting there running STIG automations, well, they're free to pick up other automation tasks. So, you know, if you're working in a, a cloud setting where you're leveraging um, a, a bot that is uh, always available and you're only using that bot 25% of the time for STIG automation, well, then there's 75% bandwidth capacity available to that bot to perform all sorts of automations that other STIG automation tools wouldn't be able to do. So that's kind of our value proposition. When we look at it, it, it is really killing many birds with a single stone. Um, and even if it were just the STIG bot use case alone, we feel that that would be extremely valuable, but then you add in all these other components to it. And, uh, and we, we feel it's a winning solution. So. That's great. I appreciate it, Derek. And thank you, Daniel and Anthony for joining. Uh, let me just go ahead and um, pop up our contact info for you uh, one last time. Uh, if you have any questions about um, what Derek and the team presented today for the, the STIG bot, uh, feel free to reach out to us here at Automation Anywhere. My email address is uh, build.bunts at automationanywhere.com uh, or right here on LinkedIn. Uh, feel free to just message me on LinkedIn um, or reach out to Derek directly. Um, you can see his email address here, Derek Tetlow at agile-defense.com. Thanks everyone. Thank you.